Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Trap the Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Time for another Fern Friday. Or Fern whenever you're watching this. Anybody recognize this one right here? A few weeks ago, I had this fern in one of my vlogs. I introduced it as my Boston fern, who I had named Mark Wahlberg. But before filming this video, I went to repot my Boston fern, and I realized I goofed. Big time. As I was repotting my Boston fern, I realized very quickly, oh wait, this isn't the fern I had in my vlog. No, this is the fern from the vlog. This is a Kimberly Queen fern. Whoops, they look very similar, don't they? But yeah, not the subject of today's video, but the care, very, very similar. Yeah, mm -hmm. see, slight difference. <laughs> I was repotting this guy and I was like, wait a minute. No, 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 wrong fern. See, the Kimberly Queen fern, very, very similar. They are both Nephrolepi, so they're related. But no, not the same plant. Similar, but not the same. Now that that is all out of the way, for this week's video, I want to talk about the Boston Fern. The Boston Fern, whose actual name is the Nephrolepis exalta bostoniensis. This is a true tropical fern. Keeping them above 45, 50 degrees is best. At the more maximum range, they can get up to three feet high and they'll just sort of keep on spreading somewhat indefinitely. And I always wait way too long in the videos to say this. These are non-toxic to dogs and cats. So they're a nice pet safe fern. The Boston Ferns are one of, if not the most common of the houseplant type ferns. You can see it's got Things got a little bit rough during the repotting. I didn't record the repotting process just because I really, there wasn't much to show because I just popped out its nursery can and dropped it right into this pot. So there wasn't really anything to it. I just wanted it, something that was a little bit more attractive. Typically the Boston Ferns like a well-drained soil that still holds on to some moisture. The Boston Ferns are one of, if not the most common of the houseplant type ferns. For a pretty good reason. It's a pretty easy to grow fern. I know I've mentioned in some of my other Fern Friday videos that there are some eccentricities with ferns that sometimes you can grow a fern to the T and it just won't do well, but something else that you're not even doing what you should be doing will thrive. Just because it's considered to be one of the easiest ferns doesn't mean that it's easy. Not for everybody. There's a lot of variables with houseplants. Things like lighting, humidity, altitude, all kinds of things. I was a little bit premature with repotting this and I probably should have potted up into something larger. This pot I was using here is pretty much the same size as the root mass. It wasn't really an upgrade, so I will probably be bumping this up again. I really just wanted something more attractive for the video to be honest, so I'll go ahead and bump it up into something larger. I'll record it when I do that, but it's very simple. Best time of year to do a repotting on a Boston fern is really springtime, like right before their active growth starts or as soon as you start to notice it, that's a good time to go ahead and repot them. Make sure you bump them up to something that's like a couple of inches, a few fingers out on the outer perimeter of the pot that they're in. And they'll fill that pot out very quickly. As far as ferns are concerned, these guys grow pretty quickly. The majority of ferns, particularly houseplant type ferns, really do prefer a nice humid environment. One of the great things about the Boston fern is it tends to be a little bit more tolerant of dry conditions. Sometimes though, there will be problems if things are too dry. Browning leaf tips starting from the outside, like on the edges of the little leaflets on those fronds, that's a pretty good indicator that the plant could use some more moisture in its air. Because they're so large, it's not as simple as just setting them on top of a humidity tray, not practically anyways. Okay, so big it's hard to get in here and film it. But yeah, it would be difficult when these start to get really big. This one's still pretty little. Once they get bigger, it'd be pretty difficult to have a humidity tray under there. So it might do well in a room like a bathroom, just the, like the other ferns, if you live in a really dry, arid climate. If conditions really are too dry, they'll start to drop their little leaflets. They can be kind of messy in that regard. The common practice to go ahead and mist them a couple of times a day, the top of the soil and the foliage. That can be a great way to keep them kind of moisturized a little bit, as long as you're making sure that there's time allowed for the water to evaporate and dry within the crown of the plant. The Boston ferns are also usually grown in a hanging basket, which is another reason a humidity tray may not be the best option for them. In case a humidifier, maybe you have a fish tank, hang it up above your fish tank. I don't know. Heck, keep it in your shower if you have a nice sunny bathroom. For the most part, they're just not too fussy, at least not when compared to other ferns. As far as lighting is concerned, just like the majority of the other ferns, they don't need bright, 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 intense light. Though with proper irrigation, I've kept my Boston ferns in nearly full sun before, but they were on drip emitter and like they were very, very well hydrated. I wouldn't say I would necessarily recommend that. In the house, a brightly lit room keeps them away from hot or cold drafts. I always like to make sure to rotate my plants probably about bi-weekly. That way I can make sure I'm getting nice, even growth. They are a more forgiving fern. It's not something like the maiden hair fern where, you know, once they dry out, you, you, they're kind of done. Sometimes, so, but not always. Sometimes you can cut them back and they'll come back for you. The nice thing about the Boston ferns though is they can dry up somewhat and they'll usually forgive you for it. 
It's important to make sure to water them when the soil starts to begin to dry up top within the top inch of soil. They like their soil to stay consistently moist but never soggy. Which I know, fairly typical of all the ferns that I've talked about so far. The thing with these Nephrolepes, this guy, the Boston Fern as well as the Kimberly Queen Fern, I have noticed particularly for me when I'm able to keep the air a little bit more humid, like above 40 to 50%, which isn't really very humid at all for a house plant. But as long as the humidity is up, I don't have to water them that often. I just make sure they get a drink when the soil starts to feel dry. It's probably like, I don't know, maybe every 10 days, which is absolutely nothing for a fern. I have like the maidenhair ferns. They need to be watered like every other day out here. Hence why I got this one in a terrarium now. But a terrarium is not really going to work for a Boston fern. These things are massive. As far as fertilizing is concerned, a balance like an all-purpose fertilizer diluted to a half to a quarter strength about twice a week to once a month during their growing season, which is typically April through September. I prefer with ferns if I'm fertilizing them bi-weekly, so twice a month to use a quarter strength fertilizer fertilizer and then if it's just once a month a half strength sometimes these fronds will start to get a little bit dull mixing in like a teaspoon to a tablespoon of epsom salt into their water can help kind of revive that and get them to be a more dark lush green color that's not something you'd want to do too often though because those salts will accumulate so it's important to kind of stagger that out and make sure that the soil is getting flushed clean that way the salts don't build up around the roots and actually a teaspoon to a tablespoon per gallon of water probably seems kind of light i always like to err on the lower side with that but i really think like commonly probably one to two tablespoons would be okay. Another great thing with these ferns is that they are very easy to propagate. You can propagate them fairly often. In the springtime, they're really easy to divide. You can just go in, you really, you can pull them out of their pot and usually just kind of pull them apart, but it's probably better to use a knife. That way things are more clean and sterile. Using a knife just makes a cleaner cut. You can make those cuttings at just about any size though. When temperatures warm up here, I'll record when I go ahead and actually do a real repotting on this and propagate it. But I'll be doing exactly what I just said. I'm just going to lift it out, probably divide it into several pieces, and then I'll put it into a potting mix that retains a little bit of moisture but still drains well. And then I'll be waiting at least one month before giving those divisions any fertilizer. Kind of want to let the roots recover a little bit. Ferns have very delicate, delicate roots. If you have a Boston fern and you're noticing that there's yellowing in the foliage, yellow on the inside, check to make sure that that soil's not sopping wet. It's sometimes that can be an indication of overwatering. Very limp, dull, flaccid foliage that can also be an indication of too much water. The kicker with ferns, really just houseplants in general, is that browning foliage is typically an indication that things are too dry but it can also mean that things are too wet. So it's really best to just sort of use some deductive reasoning, see if the soil's really wet, think about how long it's been since it was watered. If it's really, really dry, then odds are it just needs more water or higher humidity or both. Yellowing tends to be more typical for overwatering. I have noticed, at least in my experience, that mealybugs do seem to like the Boston fern. If you encounter pests on these, as long as they're like a smaller size, you can take them to the sink or into the shower rinse them very very clean spray them down with some neem oil horticultural oil a horticultural soap i really like using a diluted peppermint oil just a couple of tablespoons per like two liters that works really well for mites and mealybugs and a lot of things coats them and suffocates them but it really is just so easy just to take them to a sink or a shower and blast those things off of there let it dry give it a good spray let it sit for a while and then probably have to repeat that weekly until you don't see any critters on there anymore all right now for the thing that drives everybody crazy leaf dropping boss fern will drop leaflets like crazy if they're unhappy more often than not though they just tend to do that when the, maybe they're taken from being outdoors to indoors or maybe you have them someplace where temperatures are shifting really drastically it's normally a rapid change in environment that causes them to drop their leaflets i know these boston ferns as well as like the crotons when i take them from being outdoors to indoors there's usually a lot of leaflet drop or leaf drop on the crotons. They don't like being moved. They're just a little bit finicky and fussy that way. So again, back to that deductive logic. If they're dropping leaves, but they've been in the same place for a really long time and kind of evaluate what's going on in the area that you have them. Are there any drafts? Is it near a place where doors are getting opened and closed a lot, particularly in the winter time when the cold air will be rushing in, maybe too close to a window, too close to the glass. Basically, it's just a matter of what's going on with the plant that's making it fussy or what's happening around the plant to cause environmental inconsistencies. Like I said, generally regarded as one of the easiest ferns, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's an easy plant. If your Boston Ferns foliage is somewhat pale, but the foliage is still mostly erect, it's not limp and hanging down, that can mean maybe they're getting a little bit too much light. That's when they start to go into a very, very light pale color. It can also mean not enough light. So again, to sort of kind of figure out what's going on with where you have them. They don't need a ton of light, so that's not normally an issue, but, but they're not going to do well in a pitch black room. A few hours of filter 
filtered light, especially a window that has some nice sheer curtains or something like that. Or maybe there's a tree outside the window so the light's coming through nice and filtered. That's not really doing much. Oh, you can kind of see it. That'll do the trick. There it is, the Boston fern. Boston ferns are just nice, elegant house plants. They can be a little bit messy as far as ferns go. I do think they kind of make up for that though with how forgiving they are. Like I said, for a lot of people, not for everybody. But what have some of your experiences been growing these Boston ferns? Comment down below. Love talking to everybody. Or you can hit me up on my social media. I use Instagram more than anything else, but I'll follow you back. It's fun seeing everybody's pictures, what everybody's got going on in their gardens. Also, usually a more stable way to contact me. You YouTube, not always great with giving me my notifications. Uh, for those of you who can grow this outside as a perennial, are they getting really big? Do you keep them in hanging baskets or do you use them as a ground cover? Oh, uh, at three feet tall, it's not really a ground cover, but you know what I mean. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It makes a big difference for the channel. I notice it and I really do appreciate it. So thank you and subscribe as well because I upload multiple times a week. So hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. Hope everybody's doing well and that everything's going great for you. Life is just fantastic. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.